All right, men's brains, women's brains. Women's brains think give, 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 give. They just love to give. They're happiest when they're giving. You get a bunch of women together and they're all giving to each other. Oh, I love your hair, I love your shoes, I love your outfit. They just love it. Now, men's brains are a little different. Men's brains think take, 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 and you get a bunch of men together, and we insult each other. <laughs> we do. You're fat. You're ugly. You smell. Thanks, man. You know, I mean, that's... <laughs> so if women love to give, and men love to take, which way do you suppose the give and take goes in most relationships? <laughs> that way. Women think the answer is to give more. If they give more, it will inspire him to give back. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. All right? You've got to learn, girls, that if you're going to be truly happy, you're going to have to learn how to take in your relationship. And women are fundamentally very uncomfortable in taking in their relationships. They just love to give, 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 give. But you'll give yourselves to death. A lot of you just burn yourselves out. It's not unusual to have a woman and her husband come into my office and, you know, she, she's been married, they've been married for 25 years, and she says, I've given and given to that man. I have nothing left to give. You ever hear a woman say that? <laughs> I have nothing left to give. They're burnt because they've just given so much. Then you look at the husband and he goes, I, I thought we had a good marriage. <laughs> Because it's been great for him. <laughs> She's given. He's taken. He's, this rocks. All right? So now, girls, I'm going to show you how you can take advantage and change that flow in your relationships. I'm going to show you how you can get a man to do what you want him to do. All right? Now, when I first say that, all the girls go, yes. <laughs> and all the boys go, you sold me out, man. You sold me. <laughs> but be cool. Be cool. Because the guys like this part. It's the women who hate it. I get more static from women over what I'm about to tell you because fundamentally they hate taking in relationships. They think that he should just, you know, just give on his own. You should just give. You know, they're hoping, you know, when I say get a guy to, to give to them, they're hoping I'll say, Bad guy, bad, bad, bad. You need to give more. And that's what a lot of these people do in some of these seminars. They beat up on guys. Well, you need to be more. Blah, blah, blah. No, the real key, I mean, we, we've, I think we've established it doesn't work, <laughs> okay? The real key is to change the woman's perspective and empower you because you, in fact, have the power to change this. But a lot of women have been so affected by over-romanticized concepts in marriage that they don't understand this. They really think that if he really loved me, this would all just happen automatically. If he really cared about me, you know, la, 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 la. A lot of women really struggle with this concept because they tend to live in this false romantic fantasy land. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow 
Girls, you can either sit around with your hearts broken all the time, or you can do something about it. And I'm going to show you what you can do. Four simple steps, how you can change this dynamic of give and take in your relationships. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. Number one, how to get a man to do what you want him to do. Number one, you need to ask him more than once. <laughs> Asking a man to do something once is like never having asked him to do it at all. <laughs> Why is that? Men are always in such a take mode. We're constantly take, 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 take. We compete taking. We're in business taking. We're just take, 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 take. We're just in this take mode. And all of a sudden, his wife will say to him, honey, will you do such and such for me? And his left brain says to his right brain, you hear something. <laughs> His right brain goes, nope. <laughs> it takes more than once to get through to the boy. Now, a lot of women, you know, they, they think that, you know, that her, their husband, they're, they're, they're holding out on him. That, that we are sitting there intentionally not doing what he asked us to do. Just because we're full of hate. <laughs> But I promise you, when you asked it, it went in one ear, spun around his nothing box, and shot out the other one. And he's to remember Jack about what you said. Now, when I was first studying this, I thought, you know, this can't possibly be true. I, this, this, this has got to be inaccurate, because I'm married to a woman who has no problem asking me more than once. You know, she said, honey, will you do such and such for me? I go, no. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart, do this for me. No. Just, Come on. She's got the thing. She pats my cheeks. You're such a good husband. <laughs> do this thing for me. Okay. You know, then I do it. So when I was first reading this, they were saying women only like to ask one time. I thought that can't possibly be true. And I remember I was, I was in, a, uh, uh, in a church in Green Bay, Wisconsin at the time. I was one of several pastors at a large church there. And I, I, before service started, I thought, you know, I'm going to ask some ladies because this can't possibly be right. So I quick came up to a lady. I said, let me ask you a question. She said, yeah. I said, do you have a hard time getting your husband to do stuff for you? She goes, Pastor, you have no idea. <laughs> she says, I asked that man to paint the ceiling. That was back in October. <laughs> it's March. He didn't do it. He walks in every day. Just da, 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 da. She, I mean, she's just getting mad telling me about it. Okay. <laughs> And I said, okay, 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 I get it. But let me ask you a question. Because remember, I want to prove what I've just been reading wrong. I said, let me ask you a question. How many times did you ask him to do it? And she stared at me like a dog at a new dish. <laughs> she said, once. I was stunned. I says, why wouldn't you ask him more than once? She says, I shouldn't have to. I said, you might want to try that. I got away from her. <laughs> Went to another one, another woman. I said, come here, come here, come here. And she says, what? I said, let me ask you a question. Do you have a hard time getting your husband to do stuff for you? She says, pastor, you have no idea. She says, I will ask my husband, honey, put away the laundry. And I'll stick it right in the middle of the living room. And he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He just walks right over the top of it. He just walks around and is just, it'll sit there for a month. And she asked me with all seriousness, she said, Pastor, can't men see laundry? I said, yeah, we can see it. Just doesn't mean a whole lot to us. You know. So she, she's just getting angry, just tell me about it. So, so I said, okay, yeah, 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 I get it. But, but let me ask you a question. How many times did you ask him to do it? And that same startled look. <laughs> once. I was amazed. I said, once? Why wouldn't you ask more than once? I shouldn't have to. <laughs> Time was running out. Church was going to start. And I, I grabbed another lady real quick. I said, come here, come here, come here, come here. She says, what? She said, do you have a hard time getting your husband to do stuff for you? 
She says, Pastor, you have no, apparently I'm a complete idiot because I have no ideas. <laughs> but, uh, you have no idea. And she goes on to start living out the, the horrible transgressions of her idiot husband. <laughs> and I ask the same question, okay, okay, okay. But how many times do you ask him to do it? Once. I said, why? Why wouldn't you ask more than once? She says, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> Ladies, are you listening to me? You have to. <laughs> to just get mad and madder and madder and having a cow over nothing. He, I'm, he doesn't even remember what you said. He doesn't think about But then I learned something. The reason women find this so offensive is because really, they don't want to ask the first time. It's true, you little sinners. <laughs> because over the rainbow, if you really love me, I wouldn't have to ask. Well, come on. Just ask him again. Ask him again. What's the big crime here? You know what, you know what it is? Is you resent the fact that he's resistant to do it. Because not, not only do you want him to do it, you want him to want to do it. <laughs> you do. You. Well, I got news for you. We don't want to do it. Gonna wanna do it. <laughs> if we wanted to do it, we'd have done it already. Yeah. What do you care about the internal motivations of his heart? Stop! So he does it. I'll finally do something my wife wants me to do. I, I don't wanna do it. I said, I don't do it. And she just. Because she's getting something out of me. What, what's, with, what, what's with this? Oh, he's analyzing the internal motivations of the guy's heart. I mean, he's getting himself all kinds of trouble. I was in Germany some months ago doing some uh, seminars for the troops who were rotating out of Iraq with the army. This one lady tells me, she says, you know what? She says, my husband, if, if, I, if there are dirty dishes in the sink, he cleans them and puts them away. <laughs> I go, yes, and? She said, well, I asked him, why do you do that? And he said, because I hate dirty dishes. <laughs> and she started crying. <laughs> I said, lady, most women think they died and went to heaven if their husbands. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted him to say, well, I do it because I love you. <laughs> Who cares why he does it? Seriously, you've got to let up on this stuff. Leave him alone. Who cares what his motivations are, what his desires? I'll tell you what most men's desires are, is to do nothing. <laughs> okay, have we established that? <laughs> so get him doing stuff for you. Who cares why he wants to do it in his heart? <laughs> Number two. You need to ask him the right way. Now, what does that mean? That means don't insult the boy. <laughs> a lot of women think they can use insult as a way to motivate a man. <laughs> like, what are they smoking? What is... <laughs> not gonna work. What's the matter with you? You some kind of idiot. What's the matter with you, a man? Can't you do... What's the matter with you? Can't you pick up the laundry? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Tone insult. Do you know why women do that? Because it would work on them. 
If you insulted a woman, if you embarrassed a woman, she would change. She would do something about it. But you embarrass a guy, you insult a guy, we don't care. <laughs> He's become more resistant. He's not a woman. Okay? Don't insult the boy. Insult is not a motivator for a man. All right? Number three, you need to train him with positive reinforcement. <laughs> What does that mean? Well, training a man is kind of like training a chimpanzee. <laughs> if the chimp does what you want, you give him a reward. If the chimp doesn't do what you want, you just don't give him the reward. You don't beat the snot out of the monkey. Because <laughs> then you got a freaked out ape. <laughs> Every time you come around, he'll just run away from you. So, well, how does a woman reward a man? Very simply, by appreciating the pathetic things he does. Because men love to be appreciated. And the problem here is that women only like to appreciate unexpected kindness. If it's unexpected, they light up. Oh, 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 oh. But if it's expected, it's like, yeah, pfft. Right. You know, seriously, I mean, that's, in the beginning of your relationship, that's how he got you to fall in love with you in the first place. See, because unexpected, everything he did was, oh, oh, God, seriously, man, that's how you got her to fall in love with you. She knows you're ugly. <laughs> how do you think you got such a beautiful woman like that? Because you were nice to her and everything was, oh. But after 32 years, it's hard to come up with unexpected, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> but the more you appreciate the kindnesses that he does, the more he wants to do it. Men respond. They, men, I'm telling you, they love to be appreciated. Now, my, give, give me an example. I was at home, and I had a dirty dish in my hand. I was by myself, and I'd actually gotten trained to the point I could put it away in a dishwasher. <laughs> and... Uh, And I went up to the dishwasher, and I opened it up, but it was full of clean dishes. And that's, that's a moral dilemma to a man. <laughs> so, so it finally dawns on my little brain, empty the dishwasher. So without being asked, I emptied the dishwasher and I put everything away. And, and, and then, of course, I stick around because I want to see what happens. <laughs> Why? Because I, I love to be appreciated. So my wife comes home. She's la, 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 la. She goes over to the dishwasher and goes, ha, you emptied the dishes. And she goes, you're such a good husband. <laughs> and, and I eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, guys, get a clue here. I know it's hard, but she loves unexpected kindness. You need to learn to give her unexpected things, unexpected little things. That's how you can keep a woman crazy in love with you in that way. I told my guys I, I want to write a book, 365 Unexpected Things a Man Can Do for a Woman. And I thought about it, and I went, 52 unexpected <laughs> things. <laughs> We're going to do that every day. You know what? What was I thinking? You know. <laughs> because they light up. They light up. You know, some time ago when I was first doing this, uh, I couldn't afford to take my wife with me. And so I was doing a lot of traveling by myself. And uh, I was at a grocery store or a gas station. I was paying for, for the gas. And I saw one of these rack of greeting cards. And this one caught my eye. It said, my favorite place to be is wherever you are. And I thought, oh, I should get that. How much is that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear these women? I mean, the minute I did, oh, you ruined it. You just ruined it. You just, well, it was a motive of your heart. You know. I just wanted to see how much it was, that's all. 
There's something wrong with y'all. Anyway, so a buck fifty, I went, okay, buck fifty, I, I can do that. So I paid a buck fifty and I, I signed it, I took it home and I put it in the kitchen. I, I want to stick around and see what happens. <laughs> and uh, she eventually comes in and la 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 and all of a sudden she goes, ah, a car. <laughs> and she opens it up and it says, my favorite place to be is wherever you are. I gotta tell you boys, it was the best 50 I ever spent in my life. <laughs> talk more about that tomorrow. Okay, now. Number four, barter with him. Now, how does that work? Very simply, you become aware of something he wants to do. You know you got something you want him to do for you. And you just say to him, Honey, would you like to do this thing you would like to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, do this for me, and you can do that. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch. So, 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 and I'll, now, so now he's doing it. It's a trade out. It's just, you know, so guys like this thing because we know what the rules are. And men are used to bartering. You know, that's why we do what we do in life. That's why we go out and work. I gotta promise you, if they didn't pay us, we probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know, I don't care how much you like your job, if they didn't give you the cash, I don't think you'd do the job. It's all part of the bartering system. Men like that, okay? Now, the strongest bartering tool a woman has, we'll talk about tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. I had one lady say to me, doesn't that make me a prostitute? <laughs> I said, he's your husband for crying out loud. <laughs> Women have no idea the power they held over us. Just, they have no idea. I'm telling you, you can get a guy to do almost anything. You just come up to that boy and find something disgusting like cleaning the garage and say, Hey, baby. <laughs> How'd you like that? Why, yes, I would. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you go clean the garage and then come and find me. <laughs> Man, you got yourself a motivated boy. <laughs> I was listening to uh, Dr. John Gray talk along these lines. He's, uh, he's the guy who wrote that book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Really a brilliant guy. And uh, he uh, was, was telling the story of how his wife came up to him and said, John, take me to the opera. And he said, I don't go to the opera. I hate the stupid opera. <laughs> Dress up like a penguin and go out there. And, uh, <laughs> and right there, a lot of you girls would have just went, She just asked him again later. Hey, John. Yeah? Take me to the opera. No! John. Yeah? Take me to the opera. <laughs> oh, okay. So now she's a happy girl. Now he's all dressed up like a penguin, <laughs> taking her to the opera, and right there a lot of girls would go, where's my stupid husband to take me to the opera? <laughs> You got such an, I tell, seriously, a lot of you girls, you, you envy other 
women's husbands because they're always doing things. But you don't understand. Women who get their husbands doing this stuff know exactly what I'm talking about. They do this all the time. You sit out with your heart broken because you won't do these things. You think he should just cosmically do them on his own. I mean, <laughs> somewhere for the rainbow. <laughs> so he takes her to the opera, endures this mind numbing experience. <laughs> on the way home, she's holding his hand, just lit up. And, and uh, he says, when we. When we got home, I, and I pulled into the garage, as soon as the garage door closed, she reached over and grabbed me and made love to me right in the car in the garage. I assume they weren't driving a subcompact. <laughs> you figure it out. Anyway. So anyway, the, the next morning, he gets up early, and... Uh, Yeah, yeah, I was wondering, uh, how much are season tickets to the opera? <laughs> Men's brains, women's brains. Women's brains, they don't think very highly. Now, brands, men's brains, we think very highly of ourselves. <laughs> we love us. <laughs> Just ask, we'll tell you. All you got to do is point a camera at a bunch of women and watch them freak. Oh, oh, turn it off, turn it off, eh, oh, oh. Sanctuary! Point a camera to a bunch of guys, what do you get? <laughs> you ever watch a woman walk by a bunch of mirrors in a mall? <laughs> you ever watch a guy? such a drag because their husbands try to be nice to them and compliment them and be sweet. No, don't say that. No, I'm ugly. No. And, and, you know, why do you do that? Here, here's a secret. You want him to like you. <laughs> why are you pushing him away? And it's, you know, that's such a, such a drag. Ladies, do you know there are three billion women in the world who don't look like supermodels, and only eight who do. <laughs> Are you seeing a pattern there? Do you know Marilyn Monroe wore a size 14? Not too many guys going, oh, I don't know. She's a little chubby, I think, for me. <laughs> Did you know if Barbie were a real woman, she'd have to walk on all fours? <laughs> Explain it to her later, okay? I don't understand. 
understand. Okay. <laughs> do, do you know the models in, in magazines, they're airbrushed? Do you know what that means? That means even those women don't look like those women. <laughs> you know, constantly staring at, it, at, at, at these pictures. Uh, oh, comparing yourself to these perfect women. <laughs> Man, I'd get depressed too. Man, my wife would buy one of those women's magazines. They're like this thick. It's like an encyclopedia. 98% of it are just ads. Pictures of other women. Beautiful, gorgeous, airbrushed women. Good night. Do you know one out of every four college-age white girls has an eating disorder? Can I be politically incorrect here? You know who really has a problem in this area? You white women. It's a documented fact. Women of color generally don't have this problem. You ever see Hispanic women? They walk around like they own the world. <laughs> Black women, they carry themselves. What are you looking at? <laughs> Typical white woman. I was watching this movie with uh, Steve Martin and Queen Latifah. You see this movie? She's like the hot babe in this movie. She's a healthy girl, Jack. <laughs> She's all over the place. But you know what? She came across as very sexy in that movie. You know why? Girls, men are not looking for perfect women. You know what's attractive to a man? A confident woman. When women carry themselves in a confident way like that, it's very attractive to a man. And you just be who you are. And just carry yourself with confidence. So you're not perfect. So what? Nobody's perfect. Even the perfect women aren't perfect. <laughs> now tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing with you when we do our little talk about sex. I'm going to be reading from, from one of the most amazing books. It's, it's one of the most ancient books uh, about sex, uh, and, and it's in the Bible. It's called the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon, and uh, it's a very sexual book. A lot of people miss it because they're very poetic. They talk about pomegranates and bloom and secret gardens, and people go, man, people sure are in the gardening. What's the deal here? You know, just... <laughs> no, no, it's not gardening, okay? It's about sex. We're going to look at that tomorrow. But tonight, I want to just take a quick look at halfway through this book, he describes this woman that he's absolutely crazy about. I want you to see his description of her. He says this. <laughs> he says, how beautiful your, your sandaled feet, O prince's daughter. So apparently she had great feet. <laughs> your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of of a craftsman's hand. So she had great feet, great legs. <laughs> Your navel <laughs> is a rounded goblet. So she's had great feet, great legs, but she's got an Audi. Your waist is a mound of wheat. So she's got great feet, great legs, Audi, and a pot belly thing happening. <laughs> Your two little itty bitty breasts. Two little itty bitty fawns. <laughs> so she's got great feet, great legs, Audi pop belly, and little boobs. <laughs> Your neck <laughs> is like an ivory tower.
So she's got great feet, great legs, Audi pop belly, little boobs, and a big neck. about her. He goes, oh, how beautiful you are, and how pleasing, oh, love, with your delights. He was crazy about this woman. Men's brains, women's brains, give, 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 take, 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 give, 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 take, 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 give, 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 take, take, take. By the way, on this area of, of give and take, a lot, of, a lot of women have really been, and I'm speaking particularly in Christian organizations and Christian women's clubs, you know, they have these Christian uh, women's retreats and stuff. I, I call them estrogen fests. And, uh, <laughs> and, and they're wonderful. They're great if you're a woman, I guess. But, uh, you know, a lot of you, I know what they're trying to say, but a lot of you have really gotten bad information, or at least faulty information. This is what's being said at a lot of these. What they're saying is, unconditional love demands an unconditional relationship. Unconditional love demands an unconditional relationship. You should do anything for this man. You should just put out for this man. If he wants sex, no matter what, just give it to him. Just la 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 It all sounds spiritual, and it all sounds wonderful. The only problem is, it is patently false. Unconditional love demands a conditional relationship. The Bible is nothing if it is not a one big gigantic list of conditions. Are you hearing me? Well, doesn't God just love everybody? Yeah, whosoever, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that what? Whosoever believes, conditional. <gasps> you actually have to do something, yes. You want God to get close to you? You know what the Bible says? What do you have to do? You have, oh, <gasps> conditions. You have to, the whole thing is unconditional, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, an unconditional relationship will destroy your marriage. It will destroy any relationship. An unconditional relationship with a child will create a hellion. An unconditional relationship with a teenager, he'll destroy himself and take everybody he can with him. It is not healthy, it is not good, it is not holy, it sounds right, but it is not right. You girls need to get comfortable with this idea of taking in your relationships, putting some conditions. Now, the stronger the relationship, the stronger the conditions can be. You need to be careful. All right? And I know I'm putting a lot of weight on the girls tonight. I'll beat up on the guys tomorrow. But, you know, the, the stronger the relationship, the stronger the condition. You've got to be careful. It's kind of like, you know, if I play hide and seek with my grandsons, you know, you hide behind something, you know, that they can still see you. All right, come and, come and find me. And, and they'll, you know, oh, 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 oh. You know, you, you don't play hide and seek with a two-year-old and run into the basement and hide under boxes. Because <laughs> he won't get it. He just, you know, so you got to watch the conditions. In a healthy relationship, you can have higher and stronger conditions. But you're not going to get there if you just never require something out of the guy. Okay? And, and some guys, you know, they don't like any conditions. But guys, this is healthy. for It's not right for her to constantly be giving to you and never getting anything back. And girls, you can change that. you got to get comfortable. This is healthy 
for your relationships to take back. Most guys don't mind you taking back. What we get frustrated with is you expecting us to be like you. That we're just going to do this cosmically like you. We're going to somehow interpret your internal feelings. and We don't do that well. Okay? But you've got to, this is a healthy thing for you. I had a lady at a conference just a few weeks ago. She's crying her eyes out. And uh, I said, what's the matter? She says, my husband, he'll never talk to me. I says, never, never. He never, if he would just talk to me just for, just for a little bit, I'd feel so much better. She just cried. I said, uh, how's your love life? Oh, it's okay. I says, let me see if I get this. A man who never talks to you, when he wants sex, you just give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, why do you do that? Well, because I'm supposed to. That's what we're told. You know? I said, sweetheart, you've gotten bad information. Well, doesn't the Bible say we shouldn't deny each other? Of course. But denial doesn't mean, or acceptance doesn't mean you can't have conditions. Here's an example. If you're trying to get a mortgage for your home and the bank calls you up and says, hey, you have been accepted. We have approved your loan. You just need to come sign some papers. And they hang up. Have you been rejected or accepted? You've just been accepted, man. You're excited. Cool, cool, cool. But you have to go do what? Sign some papers. You don't go, to the stupid bank. <laughs> they were going to give me that money, but I got to sign papers. I, don't... I mean, come on. I said, the next time your husband wants to make love to you, you say, honey, I will knock your socks off. But we're going to talk for five minutes first. <laughs> That's fine. That's healthy. You can do that? Yeah, you can do that. And most guys don't mind. You know, again, get us in that position. Start taking back from us. But again, you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. If your relationship's real weak, you can't be demanding real heavy things. The heavier, the stronger the relationship, the tougher you can be. Uh, <laughs> here's an example. My wife, we have a very good relationship. Uh, all summer long, she's been telling me to kill the spiders in the house and in the garage and the outside around the house. We live near water, and spiders love water, and there's spiders everywhere. And uh, I went and, and bought the poison and stuff to kill them, but I didn't feel like doing it. So, <laughs> so she was on me for weeks about killing the spiders. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So finally, she walks in one morning, and she just as happy as can be, and everything's good. And she says, oh, by the way. No more sex until you kill the spiders. <laughs> and she walked away. <laughs> well, the first day, I didn't kill any stupid spiders. <laughs> Second day, I didn't kill any stupid spiders. Third day, I'm killing every spider within miles of the place. I'm killing spiders. Die, you stupid spiders! I sprayed our house. I sprayed the neighbors' houses, man. I sprayed every. Did I want to do it? No. Did she care? Nope. <laughs> and she's getting stuff out of the boy. Men's brains, women's brains. In closing, I want to talk to you about how men's brains and women's brains are portrayed in movies. You have guy flicks and you have chick flicks. <laughs> now, a guy flick is only a guy flick as long as somebody is dying. <laughs> and the more horribly they die, <laughs> the more we love it. You know, some guy gets his head chopped off. We go, oh, yes! Oh, 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 oh. dude, rewind that, man. Just, oh, 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 that's got to hurt. Oh, 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 play it again, play it again. Man. We, we love it. And you know what? This appeals to all men of every culture around the world. There is something that God put in the heart of every man. That just lights up at the idea of living your adventures and conquering your adversaries and going for your dreams.
You see it even, even in the smallest of boys, you, you, you girls that have little boys, you know what I'm talking about. They're always doing something dangerous. <laughs> stop that, stop that, you're gonna poke your eye out. <laughs> That's the point, mom. <laughs> If you can't lose an eye, what's the point of playing? <laughs> it wasn't a woman who invented football. No, mama, we like that. There's, there's something just blesses the heart of a man when he watches one man kick another man's butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah! Light up on the inside. Just <sighs> we love it! I believe God put that in. I'll tell you, you, you can't possibly read the Bible and not see that God is a first class, number one, grade A butt kicker. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> even, even at the end of the Bible, it says someday Jesus is going to come back and he's going to be riding on a white horse and his robes are going to be dipped in the sweetest perfume that he got from Bath and Body Works. <laughs> is that what it says? No, no. Robes are going to be dipped in what? Blood. And we, on all the men go, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, blood. <laughs> that means somebody's going to get their butts kicked. <laughs> we love it. <sighs> now, women's movies, chick flicks are a little different. Chick flicks are about connecting the wires. <laughs> you know, chick flick can be two and a half hours of four women sitting around a kitchen table talking. <laughs> and, and, and she'll be watching it going, watching it with her going, <laughs> I want to kill myself. This is stupid movies. But she just loves it. And, and these movies, they appeal to all women of every culture in the world. Why? There's something God put in the heart of every woman that says, connect the wires, connect the wires. It's all about relationships. It's a relationship. One of the reasons why married men make more money than single men is that married men become more skilled in their relationships and become more successful in life. They become more valuable to their employers. Because when a man marries a woman, he's marrying a handbook on relationships. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's absolutely true. Single men remain as they came into the world, clueless. Married men get feedback and they start learning, but you got to listen to her. No, 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 we don't like listening to you. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. I'll come up with some great plan and my wife will say, better not do that. Oh, woman, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, it's a bad idea. Oh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, you guys. Yeah, we, yeah, we better not do that. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just feel it in my spirit. <laughs> now, as different as the chick flicks and the guy flicks are from each other, there is one theme they both share that is the same, and that is this. The hero always goes back for the girl. You see it in the guy flicks, man. They're just fighting their battles, and they're on the edge of victory, and suddenly the hero starts to pull back, and his men say, where are you going? And he says, go on without me, boys. Ugh, I got something I got to do. <laughs> And at great risk to himself, he goes back for the girl, and he rescues the girl. 
And guys watch that on the screen and we go, (gasps) (laughs) Women have the same theme. The boy always comes back for her. I was watching this chick flick, Jerry Maguire. Have you seen this one? And uh, in this movie, they'd broken up and finally he wins the big contract and, and, and he realizes it doesn't mean anything because he doesn't have her. And he quick hops on a plane and he flies home and he walks into the house and she's there with a bunch of her girlfriends and he walks in unexpectedly and, and they all look up and he goes, oh, hello. And she says, what are you doing here? And he starts to explain to her that he had finally succeeded and gotten everything he dreamed of, but it meant nothing without her. And he said to her that, that you complete me. And she goes, you had me at hello. <laughs> and all the girls see that and they all go, oh, yes, 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 yes. All I'm saying to you boys is this. Do what's in your heart. Live your dreams. Live your adventures. Overcome your obstacles. Do what you got to do. Just don't forget about the girl. I've never met a man who was a financial success and who had lost his family who ever said to me, you know, it was worth it. It's never worth it. Don't be like Adam. You remember Adam in the Garden of Eden? Women say, where would you be without women? I say, Garden of Eden. (laughs) But, uh... (laughs) It's just a joke. I don't... I know it's not fair. Really, Adam's job was to guard the garden, to take care of the garden. He fell down on the job. When that serpent came around, he should have kicked that thing out on its butt. I don't know if serpents had butts. (laughs) But they don't now. (laughs) When God takes care of you, man, I'm telling you, lose your butt altogether. But you know what happened? He didn't do anything. So how do you know that? Because, because if you read the story, Eve listened to this story and then took of the forbidden fruit and then turned and handed it to whom? Adam. Ah, she didn't have to go running through the jungle going, Adam! Where you at, boy? I know you're here. He was right there the whole time. He said nothing. He did nothing. Do you know why? Because he was a coward. He was a coward and the father of cowards. Of men who claim to be men, but they're no more men than the man in the moon. They are spineless jellyfish, impersonators, who are afraid to engage their wives, afraid to engage their children. You, sir, are no man. Don't be like that, Adam. You need to be like the second Adam. You see, the Bible refers to Jesus Christ as the second Adam. The first Adam messed everything up. The second Adam set everything straight. And at great cost to himself, he came back for the girl. He came back for you and for me. That is a man. You need to be like that. Live your adventures, yes. Go for your dreams, yes. Overcome your obstacles, yes, yes, yes. Just don't forget about the girl. Don't get so caught up in your puking little life you forget about her. (laughs) You start working too late at some point, you just stand up and start heading for the door. All the guys will say, hey, where are you going? Just say, go on without me, boys. I got something I got to (laughs) do. And then go back for the girl, surrounded in the camp of the enemy by wild monsters. You mean like in the movies? No, I mean your children. (laughs) All I'm saying to you is do what's in your heart. It's in the heart of every man here, and it's in the heart of every woman here. Don't forget about her. Don't neglect her. Do what you need to do but make sure that you go back for the girl. Are you glad you came tonight?